Welcome back to another Honest Review. We are going to talk about Marvel's Avengers today and we will cover some key aspects that I believe might help someone on deciding whether to buy this game or not, so let's get it started. The first thing we will cover will be the graphics. I personally consider graphics to be an important aspect of every game and Marvel's Avengers didn't disappoint. The game looks really good, especially on PS5. The HDR works really well with the game, whether it's day or night, it looks super good and everything from the faces to the movement of the characters looks very clear and it feels like it's just flowing. So the graphics are a definite upside of this game. The story of the game is not excellent, but it's worth checking out. I personally kind of got sick of the same repetitive stories of some superhero games or movies, even though I'm a big fan, but I'm sure all of you watched the movie or played a game that goes something like this. A disaster happens, many people get superpowers, then some evil company or the government wants to either kill or cure those people somehow, and this game's story is pretty much that. You play as Kamala Khan, or Miss Marvel, and she is a cool character. She was one of the people that accidentally got powers after that explosion happened, and the Avengers disbanded, so she is on a mission to reassemble them again and try to take control back of her life so she doesn't get hunted like the other people that gained powers. The mechanics of the game are really good, and you can play as many different Avengers, and each of them is unique in their own way. All of them have different attacks and different special moves and the things that make them special, so honestly, when playing, with each of the characters, I really felt like I was part of the game. So they did a really good job of making you feel immersed. The game seems like it tried to pick up on some cool mechanics that God of War had, for example, like the quick time events where you have to press certain buttons at correct times, and it worked out pretty well. They also have finishers, and they added the finishers from Marvel Spider-Man when you press triangle and circle at the same time, but these quick time events kind of feel like they are a knockoff. And they don't seem as good as they do in the original games I mentioned, but they're still quite fun. And I'm glad that they try to learn and implement new things. Um, depending on the character you play, your controller glows differently. If you play on the PS5 version, the feedback of the controller is really good. And the vibrations and the kickbacks are very strong. Flying feels awesome and it's not that hard to learn and master the mechanics of the game. One of the things that I didn't particularly enjoy in this game was the fact that everything kind of feels scripted. Like during the game, when you play a main mission, you don't have a lot of options and you're kind of obligated to follow a specific pathway. So you're basically either on the way that the game intended you to go or you're going to fail a mission. And you can see it from here. You're able to jump correctly only when you jump on these red rails. So that is something that I kind of found lazy in the game. Uh, so for the conclusion of the game, I have to say that this game kept me interested. When it first came out, I heard about the terrible numbers it had and how everybody was disappointed with it. But over time, the people started to change their minds and it seems like the developers worked really hard on making it better. So if this game is on sale, I would definitely buy it. I got mine for Black Friday for $15 and it was an awesome deal. And if you're able to get this for a price around, you know, $15, $25, it would definitely be worth your time. So thank you for tuning in for another video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.